we are gathered here to talk about the designer called Vicky James. Guys, in my previous video talking about my top 10 looks during the AMVCAs for this year, 2023, for those that are probably not Nigerian and don't know what the AMVCA is, the full meaning is the Africa Magic Viewer's Choice Awards. It's a yearly event. Well, it started nine years ago. This year's edition was the ninth edition and it's just a forum where people appreciate actors, actresses, creatives in different, well, not in different industries, in the filmmaking and content creation industry. Typically, designers use this yearly event as an opportunity to showcase their work and just attract people to their brands. And this year was no different. However, for this particular video, we are talking about the dress made by Vicky James for Osas Igodaro. Osas Igodaro is a media personality and actress out here in Nigeria and she typically, well not typically, she often wears outfits made by Vicky James. We've seen so many different designs made by Vicky James on Osas Igodaro that just, they look stunning. I'm going to leave a couple of these designs on the screen. Fun fact, last year's AMVCAs, Osas was best dressed and the dress in which she won this award for was made by Vicky James. And this year, Vicky James made another stunning outfit for Osas Igodaro. Today, I'm just going to be talking about the dress because you guys know that I love Vicky James. I love all her dresses. If you count most of the bidding pattern tutorials that I come on here with, at least 70% of those bidding pattern videos were in inspired by Vicky James. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about this Osasi's dress. If you'll be interested in hearing my own thought pattern about this dress, how I believe everything came together, please continue to watch. All right, guys, without wasting any time, let's get straight into the topic of the day and for the sake of this video i'm just going to be putting side notes i'm looking at my phone because i have the video on my phone i'm also going to be talking about what i'm looking at on my phone i'll leave whatever it is that i'm looking at on my phone i'm going to leave it on the screen for you guys to also see the video i'm going to be working with is the video that was posted by vicky james please take notes guys disclaimer this dress was not made by me i repeat this dress was not made by me it was made by vicky james if you want to see the dresses how it was made how the, the behind the scene please go to vicky james page on instagram she always she's always gracious enough to share with us the behind the scene process of her dresses i see comments occasionally on here people saying show me how you made this dress even though i put disclaimer i try my best to put this disclaimers on every single video that i put on my page i tell you this is the name of the designer go and follow them go and watch them get inspired by them but i'll still find people in the comment section saying oh for me can you share how you made this dress with us please i did not make those dresses thank you all right so to the dress we see here that osas came for our first fitting as vicky james told us and in that portion of the video we are seeing the dress just bare no single beadwork done on the dress first thing that we see is the dress just bare all we have is the sewn outfit and this is another tip for people that always ask me fumbi should i beat the fabric before sewing no please don't beat the fabric before sewing sew the dress as you can see on here on the screen sew it everything has been done the neckline the bodies the corset it's already been sewn after you've done all your sewing that's when you now start thinking about beading and i still see people saying how do i bead please watch this kind of video is very useful so please get rid of any form of distraction and please follow along with us after we see the dress you know in the bare form seeing that it's sitting perfectly on osas igodaro who is going to be the person wearing the dress eventually we see that the dress is placed on a body form a mannequin and this is another answer to the question that i typically get on here on the channel people asking how do i bead do i have to use tambouring every single time i tell people on here my viewers my supporters i tell you guys that i'm only using tambour rings for my bidding because it's an educational video i'm not trying to make a dress i'm not trying to make anything i'm just trying to teach you all how to bead using certain types of beads, certain types of gems, accessories. So it won't make any sense. I don't take client orders at the moment and there's only so much, is only so much clothes I, or so many clothes I can sew for myself. So the only way around that kind of challenge is, for me is getting a tambour ring and sample net, sample fabrics, just beading on them and showing you guys how you can incorporate those videos that I share with you into your own design. So back to what I'm saying, 
get a body form, get a mannequin. All right, so after Osas tried the dress and I believe the dress was perfect on her body, they went ahead to place the dress on a mannequin. And we see here that Vicky James said that the bidding pattern that was done on that particular dress was inspired by a certain designer. Moving on, Vicky James shows us the inspiration for the bidding pattern done on the dress. And first of all, we can see the... I don't know who it is. That's not the hand of Vicky James there, basically. We can see maybe the pattern maker. He has drawn out the pattern. And this right here looks like hard gum stay. So this is a tip here I'm also learning. So if you want to make long-lasting patterns, patterns that you don't have to worry about, it's tearing. Instead of drawing your pattern on a pattern paper that is prone to tearing, you can draw your pattern on a hard interfacing, something like this hard gum stay that I'm seeing here. That's what I see here. I might be wrong, but this looks like hard gum stay or cloth gum. It's a pretty thick kind of interfacing in my opinion. So we see that the pattern has been drawn. We also see the little pattern by the corner on a piece of paper right there. And then they transferred it into a bigger kind of, they magnified it basically. I think they did the sample on a piece of paper and then the pattern maker just put it on a wider piece of fabric, which is the interfacing that I just spoke about. And we see here that they did multiple sizes of this pattern so we have the small one almost like the pattern starts to graduate with time they start from the small size to larger sizes so we have a couple here about i think one to three about six or seven patterns right there according to what they are showing us you won't really know for sure most of the designers here show us what they want us to see there's probably a lot more going on apart from what they are showing on here so we see here them just moving around the patterns and then we see here can you guys see the tambour ring right there so this is another way to use a tambour ring this is a pretty big tambour ring that the person working here is using to embroider they are doing some kind of embroidery work on the i think this looks like nets i don't think it's illusion net i think it's just regular nets but they are doing embroidery work on it which is going to later serve as the pattern or the platform on which they start bidding anyway let's continue so we can see the embroidery work going on all around and then we can see the train of the dress and now let me pause here now we can see them now layering the embroidered net fabric i think that net no i think the net was definitely layered on top of each other i don't know whether it's double i don't know if they doubled or tripled the net just to give it more body so when also working with net fabric another another tip i can share with you guys when trying to bid on net is to layer it up if you use just a single piece of net chances are that, especially when it's ordinary net if it's illusion net illusion net that's why it's pretty pricey it's very it can go through a lot of wear and tears and not you know rip but with regular net if you do any small rough handling it will tear so the trick to avoiding that is layering up your net so they layered up this net i think whether two or three i might be wrong again and then they did some kind of embroidery work and of course they trimmed out that embroidered portion of the net and then they started layering those embroidered pieces of net on the train of the dress let's continue so after layering everything up it was now time for i think it's vicky here that is just mixing up the crystal so we see here that when it comes to a bead work she doesn't what she did there was just poured, she poured all the mixture of beads that she wants to use and access. I think I see some sequence here as well. She poured everything into a bowl, mixed it up, and then the beaders will now just start picking from that mixed up look. That's what also gives the cloth a lot more shine. So we can see that's what she's doing there. And then we can see the beaders at work. Guys, I cannot imagine how many hours, how many days these beaders spent on this work. And according to the caption of this video, she said that it took... 30 bidders. That is why when you see the prices of some of these dress, I know some people probably out of ignorance start saying, oh, is it not just to sew? What did they do that the cloth is, that all these designers are thieves? Guys, it's huge ignorance. You guys should be giving Nigerian fashion designers, fashion designers in general, safe. let's even forget Nigerian fashion designers. We need to be giving them their credit because a lot of these awesome, awesome outfits that we see, you see the final results and you just think, oh, what did they do? But when you now see videos like this kind of gives you an insight into the amount of work that goes into creating some of these awesome outfits. And you saw in the comment there, Vicky was like, if she calls the dress $50,000, people will start shouting, but when you think of the behind the scene, it's probably what's up to that $50,000 that she called. Because these bidders that are bidding here, she's not going to give them paper at the end of the day, right? She's going to pay them. The embroidery man, the pattern maker, the tailor, everybody is getting paid. She as well as the designer, the creative director, she's getting paid. 
most of these people need they need to get the value for their work and one thing i've noticed here in nigeria is when it comes to hand work well craft work hand they call it a work here hand work here i don't know the i don't know a better english term for it people here in nigeria do not appreciate creatives enough and i'm speaking from experience even with my work as a millionaire a bidder when it comes to headgears and accessories when i see the way certain people price my work i'm like you don't like me because you looking at me the way i look right now and you're offering me 2000 naira does 2000 naira look like the kind of money that is going to give you the quality of work i'm providing you or even feed me the fact that I'm a millionaire doesn't mean I don't have bills to pay. The light I'm using in running my equipment, the equipment I use in putting these things together to create something beautiful for you. I'm not giving the people in the market paper as a form of payment. I'm paying them. I'm spending money, spending time, spending energy. And then the least people can do is tell me, uh -uh, is it not just Ashoki? Is it, how much is Ashoki? And nowadays, that's part of why I don't know if I'm, I think I've mentioned it on the channel. I put a pause on my business because it's almost annoying. And for me, I'm a very emotional person. Sometimes out of frustration, I find myself close to tears because it's so offensive in my opinion when people just call certain types of prices or when I tell them the price of my work, they feel like they have the right to tell me how much I should charge as payment for the work that I'm putting in. So anyway i don't want to get into that topic today so we need to give our designers a lot of credit look at the number of people bidding this dress this one single dress alone anyway she told us that she had 30 bidders bidding on these patterns and we can see them at work right there after that at this point we said that they've jumped to the portion where they did some kind of bead work on the body of the dress so this dress is like a two-in-one dress i think we have the main straight portion the the main like i don't know if it's fishtail i can't see the bottom yet we have the beadwork going on the body. Remember, the dress was bare before, and now we can see. And I think here they used crystal beading. I really cannot tell what is going on here. It looks like rose montis too, now that I'm zooming in close. I really cannot see, but it looks absolutely stunning. And we see that they used that pattern that they drew. You remember the pattern that was used at the beginning that I talked about? They used it on the body to create this beading pattern on the bodies. And now they came for another fitting. So most times when, another tip for designers, if you are trying to create a name for yourself, as a fantastic fashion designer. Fittings for your client is very compulsory. If you wait till you are finished sewing the dress and doing finishing touches, except you're running a ready-to-wear brand, if you're running a bespoke fashion house, you need to schedule fittings with your client, okay? So we see that Osas came for another fitting while the dress was still being beaded and we can see vicky here trying to snatch her waist and all of that and you can tell when your client likes their outfits you can tell from their body language you can see even during the fitting osas is dancing she's smiling she looks excited and i mean look at look at what we have already and now they are moving to the bust area and the waist area we can see here that vicky did some bead work at first and then changed it to this like sparkly bead work and it looks absolutely stunning guys it looks absolutely stunning the you can see crystal beads going on some rose montes in gold so many things are going on right there it's a combination of different beads remember again at the beginning she just poured a couple of beads together and shook it up and look at what we have here absolutely stunning absolutely absolutely stunning and guys you can see as well the end result of the dress after osas wore it for the awards show i remember in that my video my top 10 video i told you that Osa stood at number two and it was a close tie between herself and Beauty Tukura who was my number one in that particular video. For those who have not seen that my top 10 videos from the AMV series, you should totally go check it out. Hear my point of view on some of those outfits and my thoughts. And yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this award winning dress. This dress looks absolutely stunning and eventually I saw that Osa Godaro won Best Actress. Almost like Vicky James design, it has some kind of spirit, some good luck spirit attached to it because last year when Osas wore a dress from her, she won best dressed and then this year she wore a dress again and she got the best actress of 2023 during the awards night. So this is pretty much it for this video. One thing that I think I want to try my hands on is the beading pattern done on the body and on the bust areas. Guys, if you want that video, comment I want in the comment section and I'll be sure to share that video with us once we hit 40,000 subscribers. This bidding pattern is going to be what we will use to celebrate our 40k 
milestone on the channel thank you guys so much for 32,000 as well guys at this point i've stopped checking the number just keeps increasing and increasing and increasing and i wish i could tell you that this is what is making it increase it's just little old me doing the things i love on here on youtube and you guys just seem to appreciate my work i love you guys and of recent i've been getting a lot of awesome positive feedback from a lot of the new people joining us welcome to the channel it's fun it's educative it's just mind-blowing and just it's a beautiful space basically on this channel welcome to the channel thank you so much for joining me thank you for counting me worthy to be subscribed to and watch and learn from it really really means a lot to me if you enjoyed today's video please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up again if you want this bidding patterns video comments i want down in the comment section and i'll be sure to bring it to us again once we hit 40,000 subscribers. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you all in another video very, very soon. Bye.